But what is an artist? What is an artist? Well, that is a more interesting question. Why? So what is an artist? Or Why is that more interesting than what is a bird? Well, we really don't have to ask what is a bird. People basically know what is a bird. I don't think they basically know what is an artist. I think they're more curious. People are not curious to know what is a bird, although they might be interested in bird life. Let's finish that thing about uh, what is, uh, what are we talking about? What is the difference between an artist and a well, bird? And, and what? You were talking about an artist. An artist and a goo? Yeah. What is a goo? What is an artist? Yeah. What is a Jew? What is an artist? And what is, um, you said that people are very interested in in what is an artist, even though they may not be interested in what is a bird, because they yeah. know the word bird, and that's a, an animal Nobody that flies. really asks, what is a bird? But why do they ask, what is a Jew? Why do people, why does this question come up? And I don't think Gentiles ask it, I think, uh, I think certain Jews ask it, you know, Jews, uh, religious Jews involved, uh, philosophers, maybe, involved with Jewish history. What is a Jew? I mean, what is, I, I don't never cared for the question. Why? What is a Jew? You know? Why? What is an artist? People. I think that's a more valid question. Well, not what is a Jew, but what is an artist? All right. Then what is an artist? <laughs> I walked right into that one. <laughs> what is an artist? Yeah. Well. I think people think that an artist is someone who stands... Well, what is the image? For instance, people have an image of what is a bird, the wing, the little bird flying through space. They don't, they don't even have to think about it. There's a certain kind of image there. I think they uh, consider a bird a lovely creature. Uh, I think when people think of an artist, they think of, have an image. Now, I'm not sure about this. This is my a personal conception here. Of someone standing with a paintbrush and painting a picture. And uh, I don't think they attribute too much to it. It's a very physical thing for people. It's just that person standing there with the paintbrush, and he's doing a picture for one reason, for some reason, to sell it. Oh, evidently to sell it. That's a conception. It's like, it's like when I... When I sold, uh, from the Simone show, when I sold a couple of pieces, one piece or two pieces, one piece I think I sold uh, of, of one of the pimps, uh, Jack says, you better start making pimps, start making those, those, as though I were a businessman, producing, mass producing merchandise, and otherwise I found the shirt Somebody bought this shirt, so maybe a thousand people will buy other shirts like that. I don't even, I don't think that way, you know? And people are geared to thinking that, uh, that that's the way you should think. Yeah, but what is it? What is an artist, then? You know, uh, I tell you, an artist is not someone that sells a picture. I'll tell you what he's not, for one thing, and then suddenly starts reproducing that. That A real artist, any artist worth his salt is not that. Starts reproducing that image with the idea, well, I'm going to sell them. That, you might as well be him going to business, you know, to get it. But uh, an artist I, is many things. That I can go into. You can go into the his history of art. When art started, the first, the cave painting. Yeah, why were they cave painting? Why were they painting in the caves? That's an interesting question. Why images were thrown up? Images of a particular animal, or tools, images of tools, or images of uh, people. Let me read you something that you're going to enjoy. Uh, I wrote this down. It's something I found somewhere. It's not original, but it's it's good. And it's interesting. We're talking. We got into this uh, cave painting thing. Of the cave paintings, these secretive images, or these are the cave paintings in France, by the way, offer us evidence of private acts of symbolic ritual 
participation and production. The communication was between the maker and the concept. In other words, the person, the maker, meaning the creature doing the images on the cave wall, right? And, and the idea he had. The maker and the image. The isolation involved in separation from the group was apparently intentional. Now this leads to an interesting question right here. The artist separated from the group. What is an artist, which is what we're talking about? The artist is kind of separated from the group. And apparently, he's saying that apparently the caveman's separation from the group was intentional. And that there may be a later public showing or viewing does not explain the process of private creation. That was always an interesting question. You know, are you painting? Do, do I paint for other people? Or do I paint because I'm going to have a, a public showing afterwards? No, I don't paint for that reason. In other words, I can sort of liken myself to a caveman who he says is not painting. He's separated from the group and, he, and he's not painting for future public showing. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I don't paint for, for public showing. In other words, I hate to admit it, but I'm painting for myself. There's a selfishness. But what is your reason for it? That's the reason I'm painting for myself. I enjoy it. Oh, you I'm, enjoy it. I'm, I do it because I'm obsessed with it. I enjoy it. It's, it's what I want to do. It relates me to a place I want to, or a thing I want to be related to, which is the history of art. It relates me. I feel close to Van Gogh when I paint. I feel close to Goya. But if you were a caveman painter, you wouldn't have anybody to feel close to. You'd well, be the first. Th th there might be someone to feel close to that we don't know about. Well, it always have been a first. <laughs> There's always been a first, but uh, that's what I was getting. That's how we got into this, going back to hit to the beginning of it, to history. They go back to the cave paintings. You know, it was kind of interesting. Uh, like, uh, which brings us back to what is an artist. But there are deer that make mockings on trees with their mouths to show a deer path, to tell the other deer, this is where we're going. This is the way to the water. So it's a deer path. When they mock that path, is the artist trying to say, here's something or show something? Uh, to other spe members of the species? I think the artist, well, he's doing something recognizable in the sense that his fellows will recognize it, even if the public at large doesn't. I mean, I'm painting within a certain tradition, and any, anybody within that tradition, like it or not, what the image I'm making is going to recognize more or less what I'm attached to, who I'm influenced by, what I relate to, you know? Uh, maybe even how profoundly immersed. You, sometimes you can tell how profoundly immersed someone is in, in, in history and art. I, I mean, being an artist, you can't be separated from the history of art. You can, just can't go over the wall and you, you have to be informed. You have to know the history of can't just, uh, a baby doesn't know the history of a painting. All right, a baby, a kid, a kindergarten kid, goes over to uh, make some scratches, splashes on a piece of paper to get fresh, beautiful colors. You can admire it, but they don't know the history of painting. There's something callow there, something unused, something unwise, you know? Well, what about the first caveman painter? He didn't know the history of painting. Well, there was no history. That's another story. See, I, now the first caveman painter, he, I don't think he was interested in being an artist. We, we may turn him into an artist. We say, well, there's the first cave paintings, and we can include that in the history of art. But I don't think he was interested in being a, an artist as we know an artist today. I think he was interested in making a marking for himself. I don't know. Well, maybe for maybe unlike what the item I just read, maybe unlike that item, maybe for a few other people, uh, uh, 
maybe he had nothing to do. He was just sitting around one day, and what am I going to do? And he picked up a piece of stone or something with a point, something with a point, and started to etch buffalo or some kind of an animal. And yeah. others who see this afterwards will say, well, I'll do something, too. Right, okay, yeah. Or perhaps different or yeah. further. Yes, yes, right. I can see that, yeah. But there is a history here, you know, that's what I'm interested in. There's a history, a history of painting. I'm interested in that history. Not so much the lives. I, of course, I'm interested in the life of these men because I'm interested in these men. But, uh, and, and, uh, but uh, there's a history. There's there's a history of images, of imagery. There's an entire history of imagery there. You know, from the cave paintings to Julian Schnabel, who from the first to Jackson Pollock, Julian Schnabel, or who have you. you know, the Kooning, there's a history there. We're, we're interested, we're not so much interested in the men, although everyone seems to become a star or some kind of personality today. We're interested in the art itself and the progression of it, you know, how it came about. Of course, a movie like Lust for Life, Kirk Douglas, uh, Anthony Quinn, beautiful movie, beautiful representation of the work and uh, sort of glamorous, of course, version also of the life of these men. But it was a beautiful movie. But that glamorizes the whole situation. You know, you, you look at it as you, you attach a romance to the whole thing. I don't think Van Gogh was very romantic about his art. I think he was, did it in agony. I think he was quite tortured until finally he put a bullet in his brain, or every bullet, you know? Um, well, how about you? Are you romantic about your work? No. I, I used to be, well, let me qualify that a little. I, I used to be, uh, years ago, I had this place filled, my walls were filled with photographs of paintings, pictures of artists. And at that time, I was drawing going to the well, so to speak, drawing on artists, uh, like drawing water from the well. Really, I had Van Gogh's, Michelangelo's, uh, Giotto's, uh, everything you can think of. One day, I did something interesting. I removed all those pictures, and all the walls were blank. And I didn't just remove them and put them in a drawer. I moved them and tore them up. That was, that's what was interesting about that act. I tore all these. They, some of them were beautiful pictures on beautiful paper. You tore up tore which them, pictures? All up, everything. Titian. Oh, you tore up other people's paintings. Yeah, right. Papers. All these photos that I had of paintings I had on the walls. Oh, I see. Photos. Of other painters. Yes. And you it's decided... interesting that I didn't just put them away in the drawer. I tore them all up and threw them in the garden. As if you were going to do something new or right. beyond them? Yeah, right. And You're get rid of them. It. Right. Is and it? you are... Well, I didn't want to know any... I didn't want to know about it anymore. I said, this is it. I'm on my own. I see. And but, you hadn't destroyed that painting. You just destroyed, destroyed some copies. Oh, yeah. On I destroyed piece of paper. the copies. Yeah, the, yeah. the photos. Yeah. But for me, I guess that was an important act because it was a traumatic act. But what do you think your position in the world of art is, or will be, or should be, or well, can be? <laughs> it can be a lot of things. It can be exactly what it is at the moment. A, a man in a, a loft spending his life painting, which is simple and interesting enough as it is. And that would be enough for you? Yeah. Or would you be disappointed if it didn't get more? Or is there more? All right. In a, a, let, me, a, let me explain. A, let me explain in a number of ways. First of all, it would be enough for me, and is enough for me, in the sense that it's where I wish to be. It's what I wish to do. It could be better. I mean, I wish I had a little more security. I don't have any security. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm really against the wall as far as money goes. Uh, I just barely squeak through. What about fame? Fame, I don't need that. 
I mean, it's a, it's an interesting proposal, fame. I mean, wh why wouldn't someone want to be known to a lot of people? That seems to be it today, to be known to as many people as you can be known to, which is, I guess, what fame is being known to, the, to most people. But you, you can do without that. You can live without that very easily. That's like there's a pomposity about that, you know, really pompous is an arrogance about it. Uh, I could use some money. I could. I wouldn't mind. Here, here's what I, I mean. I would like to make the connection, like I'm having this show at Central Falls, right? And everyone says, "Oh, you'll sell, maybe you'll sell out." I, I would consider myself lucky if I sold one picture, fortunate if I sold two, and a miracle if I sold three. You know, you can't expect to sell out a show. That that that's not the point. Uh, but what about the future? The, the word? future is because that would be a limited thing anyway. Central Falls is a showcase. You know, when you're showing in a in a, in a gallery that's also a, a restaurant or a bar, right? Your work is immediately suspect, right? It is. It's not like showing in a in a formidable in a gallery. You know, with a genuine gallery. There's a bar there, so it's a, you know usually bars or restaurants that show work. The work is not usually not that good, but and uh, I'm putting this work up. But the th reason I think I can do this is because I know my work is solid, and I know it will prevail. Yeah. But the point is, if I could make a connection, the beauty of Central Falls, it's a showcase. Everybody goes in there. Right. What about what? Well, how would you feel about the disappointment if you lived your entire life and were not famous? And how would you feel about if it were famous a hundred years from now by somebody picking up your work? I, I decided many years ago, I, I saw the handwriting on the wall, I realized I would never be famous. I don't have a problem with that possibility. You know, I realized I wouldn't be famous. I mean, it could happen, yes, you could become famous. What's more important to me is make a connection so that I could, meaning, find a gallery, finding a home for my work, a gallery that will give me a show every year, because I can produce a solid body of work every year. Uh, that's the key uh, with this show at Central Falls. Everybody will see the work. Dealers will see the work. If I can get a dealer interested who, will show, who has enough faith in me and belief in me to show my work, I could make money at it, yes, you know, but if I could somehow just show my work and be comfortable, make a certain amount of money so I could yeah. not live in fear. Well, that, that's a goal of every artist, is to get to that position. But what about the goal of being uh, considered and put into museums and uh, I wouldn't having mind. big, ret I big wouldn't retrospectives? Mind. Like, why not? I'd like that. Why should I resist that? Of course. I'm but not. how would you feel if it never happened? I would feel okay. I decided I decided it would never happen. It might happen. I decided it would never happen in my lifetime. Whether it happens after my life, when I'm dead, I don't know about that. Who knows? Do you care? I would like to. I would like to be represented in, in the gallery or in a museum. Yes, I, I wouldn't mind. I, mean, I would like to be associated. Well, where do you feel that you are in the history of painting? I think if my work ever gets out there and people can really look at it, I, I think I would have a place in history. Where? What do you mean where? Well, between someone and someone, or, or associated with who, or uh, I think I would be associated with modern painting. Uh, you know, I think I would be associated with what's current in my time and right now. I think all my influences would be pretty obvious to people, you know, to other artists or people who know art. It's pretty obvious. People like Brooklyn.